all of you, and I am very happy to be with you. It's good to see uh, the faces that I've known for all these years, and also some new faces. And uh, we trust that the Lord will richly bless us today as we study His Word. Um, just like to, uh, to bring some, uh, some the greetings of our brethren from Mariah Heights Church. They sent their greetings to you, knowing that I would come here. And uh, also recently, I had the uh, opportunity to be in Israel. I went on a business trip. But as you know, uh, Israel cannot be all business. So for two or three days, we had a chance to, uh, uh, Brother Marianne and myself, to travel, go to Galilee, to the Dead Sea, to Masada, to Jerusalem, saw the Mount of Olives, Gethsemane, the Wailing Wall. I'm sorry? Do you have pictures? I have pictures, but not here. <laughs> and um, very interesting to see still the, uh, how the Jews still walk up to the Wailing Wall, how they still uh, come in there as families, as, as individuals, how they will go up right against the wall, and they will cry. They will write their little, uh, uh, little petitions to the Lord, put it on a piece of paper, s slip it into the wall. Uh, very, very interesting for me. It was uh, very uh, culturally interesting. And of course, the Dead Sea, you cannot sink in it. You really cannot. Uh, you, you get in it, and if anything, you're two or three or five degrees uh, standing like this, the tendency is the water to just throw you up and almost throw you uh, all the way around. It's so, so, so much salt, so much sulfur in that water. Um, very, and if you get a drop of it in your eyes or a drop of it in your, in your nose, in your nostrils there, it stings. It really, really stings. Um, but it was, it was uh, for me, the most uh, moving part, the best part of it, was to see the temple site in connection with the Garden of Gethsemane and the Mount of Olives. Uh, and, of course, the, the, uh, the, the tour lady said, well... Uh, this is where the Valley of Kedron is. And of course, uh, immediately your mind goes to the Brook of Kedron. And that's where the Brook of Kedron was. And you can see that now it's dry, but in the rainy season there's still uh, the Brook site. And um, it was all very interesting. They took us to the Holocaust Museum, and there I... Uh, we were underneath some big trees, and as I looked up, guess what trees they were? St. John's bread or locusts, okay, full of the beans that, uh, that John the Baptist would, not of the, those specific ones, but John, we read that his, his food was honey and also locusts, which is St. John's bread, which is a carob bean. That's what it is. And uh, it, was, it was all very, very interesting. Uh, from uh, Sacramento, the news that I bring is we are just at the very end. This Sabbath, many of the brethren are in Yosemite. And with the youth, the youth have had a five-week uh, seminar. Brother Peter Lausovic has been uh, uh, leading out in the seminar. And the last three weeks, they canvassed. 25 to 30 of them, they went out door to door canvassing. And uh, this is what is considered, this is considered difficult work in the United States. But the youth went out between 5 and 8 p.m. And they went door to door. And uh, we had uh, Kyla Carmony, some of you know the, the Kyla, excuse me, Stemler. And uh, she, uh, she has been involved in this work, she, uh, she taught them. And they are doing a fantastic job. They, they sold over 1,000 books, over $10,000 in that, uh, that time frame. Uh, and uh, w they would go two by twos. Uh, one of them was Brother Fuentes, younger boy, and my nephew, uh, Paul Jr., or Mikey. And they would get to a street. And towards the end, they, uh, the, the blessings were coming in so, so well that... One was praying, on this street, I want to sell 10 books. The other one says, no, we're going to pray that we will sell 20 books on this street. And they sold 15 books. Uh, so, but the result of it was that 42 slips were signed, either requesting uh, cooking classes, 
uh, or requesting how to stop smoking, and 22 asked for Bible studies. So that is, that is the, the wonderful part of it. The money is just a side uh, issue, the, uh, but the, to reach souls, to be able to be an influence on souls for the kingdom of God is wonderful. And as you know, uh, we have been um, working uh, also to, to send, send materials to our brethren throughout the world. And our latest endeavor was to send a box to our brethren in East Central Africa, especially the countries of Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, Rwanda, and uh, some of the countries right around there. We're in touch with the brethren. We found out where we can send the box to so that they can get these materials without having to pay taxes and distribute them uh, among the people, do some canvassing work also, and uh, I, I do have pictures of that. We put the box together at our shop. Some of you can come and see it later. Uh, but the, the people preparing the box, they, have said, they, they told us, we have never been so joyous in making a box because we know what's going, what's going in here. Some of them are not from our faith, but they, uh, upon seeing the books, they wanted some of the books. They wanted books. And uh, so we uh, distributed books there. Also, the books that went were 210 sets of the pocket size Spirit of Prophecy and containing Patriots and Prophets, Prophets and Kings, uh, the eight books. You know, the five uh, Conflict of the Ages plus, plus uh, Steps to Christ, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, and Christ Object Lessons. We sent 30 plants and health. We want to see what they can do with that. Uh, 180 copies of the Standard Bearer on the uh, smoking issue, and um, people in Africa smoke too much also. Loma Linda messages, 90, origin and early experiences, 30, protocol, 40, national Sunday law, 1,000, 4,400, fundamental health truths, saved by grace, 69 copies, and then some full-size uh, uh, books with pictures, The Great Controversy, 60, God's Answer to Prayers, 40, Peace Above the Storm, 20, Bible Heroes, 20, My Friend Jesus, 20, The Desire of Ages, 20 in one edition, and uh, The Passion of His Love which is a book that's come out lately on the, from Gethsemane to his uh, resurrection. Okay. Uh, uh, no, not this one. Not this one. It's a dark cover. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful book. Just, it's Desire of Ages from Gethsemane to his resurrection. Okay, with a beautiful cover. Uh, the Passion of His Love, Pathways 5, Desire of Ages, a different version, another five. Uh, pamphlets also, 100 Facts, uh, Caught in the Quicksand, Danger Brewing in the Cup, Just One Puff, The Millennium, Sweet, White, and Deadly. And uh, my brother who is uh, uh, involved, uh, Brother Daniel would know this, in uh, the uh, publishing of the original materials, uh, 180 copies of Great Controversy and 300 copies of Steps to Christ. And with that, we had no more room in the box. We closed it up, and uh, now it's ready to go. So please uh, pray, because one of the concerns, I, I remember the brother from, uh, from, uh, from Ukraine. He said, you know, in Russia, we are, we are not so poor. We have what to eat. We have our homes, but we don't have materials. Now, in Africa, they're poor and do not have materials. Many have never, don't even have Bibles. So we pray that it will be a blessing to, to all that, uh, that will receive it. And we ask you to add your prayers also. Our topic today is the faith of Mary, and we want to invite you to uh, go to, uh, to the second chapter of Luke. And you know, I find that this topic of faith is the one topic that most concerned our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you noticed that also? He, in His teachings, in His miracles, in His life, in the parables, above all other topics, this is the one that came up more than any other. 
we know what the first miracle of Jesus was. He turned the water into wine, and it was with a specific purpose, one, to honor the faith, we read in the Tsar of Ages, to honor the faith of Mary, and second, to do what? So that the disciples would believe on him. Now, we know what the first miracle is, and I often ask, what is the second miracle? Who knows? What is the second miracle that Jesus performed? And nobody knows. The blind one. The blind one. This is a little bit down the line. Okay, the blind man of John 9. There were several blind men. Okay, but the second miracle, which is specifically recorded of Jesus, is the one found at the end of the fourth chapter. After he visits the Samaritan woman, etc., he goes up and the noble man's son, who came with how much faith? How much faith? Little faith. And what happened? When we apply little faith to the source of faith, what happens? Uh, he increases the faith, right? You know that there were some miracles between the first and second recorded miracle of Jesus? And we read that in uh, at when he cleansed the temple in John, you will read that he performed miracles. But we're not told which miracles. Okay? We do read in the Tsar of Ages gave gave sight to the blind, etc., etc., but he performed miracles on that occasion. Now, as we go over the other miracles of Jesus, we find many dealing with faith. What is your favorite miracle of Jesus in which he deals with the subject faith? Okay, all of you can think of at least one. Okay, let me hear some of uh, your favorite miracles of Jesus in which he deals with the subject of faith. After in the resurrection of his brother, he believes. Oh, I believe he will resurrect. He oh, the resurrection of Lazarus to what? To increase the faith of whom? Martha, Mary, and the disciples, right? Okay. Which other miracles of Jesus do you... Uh, how about the, the paralytic by, by the pool of Bethesda? How about the blind man? Believe ye that I'm able to do this? How about, the, how about the, the centurion, the Roman centurion, whom Jesus said of him, I have not seen such great faith, no, not in all, Israel. How about when Jesus crossed Galilee and there was the storm? And what happened to the disciples? What happened to their faith? It was a lot like whose faith? Our, Our faith. And what happened? What did Jesus say? Have ye no faith? O ye of little faith, according to the other gospel. And how about the woman that touched the hem of his garment? What did Jesus say about that woman? And thy faith hath made thee whole. How about the Syrophoenician woman whose daughter lay home sick of a devil? What, what did Jesus say of her? Great is thy faith. Over and over again, Jesus was noticing faith, commending faith. One time, he even said that he saw faith. Now, our Lord Jesus, he could see faith in a different way that you and I can see faith. What was that specific occasion? You remember that a paralytic was lifted up by four of his friends and brought down the roof, through the roof, and what does the, uh, what the uh, gospel writer say? And Jesus, seeing their faith, over and over again, the Lord Jesus was trying to leave something with the disciples. Faith, for he knew that faith is the victory. He knew that it is impossible to please God without faith. And he knew that were we, are we to have faith, we could remove mountains and all things are possible to us. Now, one of the first examples of faith is this of Mary. And it is a wonderful example in Luke chapter 2 of how faith increases, how faith grows. Because faith doesn't grow on a tree that we can pluck and put it in our pockets. Faith grows in 
people's minds and in people's hearts. And there is such a thing as the exercise of faith. And that's what we would like to do. We would like to be like Mary, the mother of Jesus, who, as we read, she kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And according, that was verse 19, Luke 2, 19, and 251, the latter portion of it says, his mother kept all these things where? In her heart. Now let us look at some of the words brought out here because the, 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 uh, the answer is even in the verse itself. It says, but Mary. Let's take a, let's take a look at the word but. You know, although all others would forget, but who would not? No. Mary would not. Although the priest did not think much of it, although Joseph, although the disciples might forget, but who would not? But Mary would not forget. And what does it say of her? Did she like these things? It says she kept these things. Now, keeping is a little bit more than liking. You see, she kept them. She made special room for these things. And she polished these things. She kept it ever fresh, the things that she kept. But Mary kept. When you keep something, isn't it special? Don't you choose to keep that which is special? The other things, what do you do with it? You throw it away. And that's what a lot of the people in the days of Jesus did. They threw away, they threw away Jesus. But Mary kept Jesus. By what? And how many of the things did she keep, according to the verse? All those things. All those things. Not just some but all of them, and you can imagine the list that she had. There was, there was, it was a huge list. And we will talk about these things, but we will jump. And what did she do with them? She, what? According to Luke 2.19, she, she had kept. But now what would she do with these things that she had kept? She pondered. That's more than thinking. That's more than just casually pulling it out, out of the bag. What did she do? As she would go about her day, what would she do with all these things? She would ponder upon them. And you know, if you were to see Mary with that silly little smile or grin on her face, what was she doing? She was pondering upon all these things. About whom? about her Jesus, her sweet Jesus. That was her favorite subject. She pondered upon all those things. And what did she do with them? Not only did she ponder, but she kept them where? Where did she ponder them? In her? You know, many times she didn't have to speak of them, right? Others may not understand. Others may not. Uh, but for her, it, ma it made all the sense in the world. What were these things that she pondered upon? You and I are invited to, to step back 2,000 years ago. And what were some of these things, or, or as many as we can get to today? Okay, the very first thing, what was every mother of Israel expecting, especially in those days? The coming of? The coming of the Messiah, of Jesus Christ. And who did it, who did it happen to? To Mary. And there was, how, how did Mary find out about it? The Holy Spirit made a visit through whom? Through the angel Gabriel. The angel Gabriel came and made an announcement. Hail Mary, thou art highly favored. Little did she know how highly favored, highly favored would be. For he had an announcement. You have been chosen, Mary, to be what? the mother of the Messiah, the mother of Jesus Christ. Wow! Fantastic! Mary, what a... W but how shall these things be? Oh, don't worry about this. The Holy Spirit will, over, will overpower you. And you know what? And your cousin Elizabeth, she too is with child. And as if noticing Mary's asking, what did he say? 
with God, all things are possible. Even though Elizabeth is, is already old, what happens? What Elizabeth is expect Fantastic. And you know what the Bible says? That Mary, what did she do right away? She picked up and in haste, in haste, she made her way to the hill country of Judea. You know, she couldn't share this with too many people. It was too much for people to, to really understand and share this with her. But who could she share it with? Her cousin Elizabeth. She definitely could. And she makes her way. Now, Elizabeth was expecting for how long already? According to the angel's announcement, six months. So the Baptist would be six months older than Jesus Christ. And she makes her way to Elizabeth's house. Now, you can imagine her joy in going, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, guess what? Elizabeth didn't know that Mary was expecting. Mary knew that Elizabeth was. She's got wonderful news to share. And my cousin, she will, she will rejoice with me. She knocks at the door. Elizabeth opens the door. And what happened there? The baby, the baby what happened? Leaped. Even before Mary could say anything, what happened? The baby leaped in Elizabeth's stomach, and what did Elizabeth do? She, she was overpowered by the Spirit, and she, she greatly uh, commended Mary, who had come. She said, now, Mary, you are blessed to have this, this baby, the Messiah, coming. Mary didn't even have to say anything. And what happened? Her cousin Elizabeth already knew. And as a sign, the baby, the Baptist, recognized Jesus Christ. He would recognize Jesus 30 years later also, you know, uh, even though they had never met. And, you know, Mary, what would she do with all these things? She would keep them in her heart. And she would ponder upon them. Now. Can you imagine those three months that Mary spent with Elizabeth and Zacharias? What do you think they did for three months? Can you imagine worship service in their home? What do you think they did? I think they went through all the books of the Old Testament, and what do you think they did? They must have searched to see all the prophecies concerning the Messiah and the prophecies concerning about John the Baptist, for there were prophecies also. And the rejoicing that went on in this household, as more and more they would see that not only they were so favored, but what? The nation would be favored. The people of God would be favored by the birth of these two, and specifically about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Mary kept and pondered upon all these things. And you know, after a time, Mary went back. And next, we find Mary and Joseph going down to where? To the city. Where was Joseph? Uh, where was Jesus born? The city of? Was it Jerusalem? No. Where was it? In the city of David in Bethlehem. And as the child is, is born, you, you remember, they found no room for Jesus at the end, right? Do you have room for Jesus in your heart? This is how we can offset that, right? They found no room for Jesus at the end. They finally found a place for him. Where? In a manger. And that, what do they do in a manger? In the stables. They bring up the animals, right? And what happened? What happened? Who were the first visitors that Jesus had? Three wise men. Not the wise men and not three of them. Who were the first? The shepherds. The shepherds were the first visitors. And who was it that came and announced to the shepherds about the birth of Jesus? The angels, first Gabriel, and then a multitude of angels came and told them that unto you a Savior is born. And what was the sign going to be? How are they going to find this Jesus? In a in a stall, in a manger. You will find them in a manger. And so those shepherds came. And when they came, what do you think they told Mary and Joseph? The story of how the angels had 
bidden them to go and see the baby. And what did Mary do with all of these things? She kept them. And what do you think was happening with her faith? As she kept, pondered uh, the, upon these things, her faith was growing and increasing. Do you not think so? Surely it was. And you know, then Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day. We have very little of that. But after that, we find after her days of purification, at least 42, we find her going to where? To the temple for the dedication. And this was the big temple in Jerusalem. And as she comes there, how is she dressed? How is she, how is Mary dressed? How is Joseph dressed? In the humble garments of, what were they? Galileans. Galileans. And not only were they Galileans, they were from the worst town of all of Galilee. They were from Nazareth, and their speech betrayed them. And so as the priest looked upon them, whom does he see? Humble peasants. There's no money to be made. They, they're not wearing nice clothes. So I'm just going to go through the ceremony, the, the ceremony just rather quickly. And he did. And uh, he returned the baby to Mary's arms. And in walks an aged man by the name of Simeon first. And Simeon, he was a man that searched the scriptures. He was a man highly favored of God. And it had been revealed to Simeon that before he should die, he should see whom? the glory of Israel, the Messiah. And he walks in, he is at a distance still, and his face, what happens to it? Lit up, lit up. And he was enraptured by God, and he lifts his voice in adoration, and he says, now I can die in peace. And he, what? You know, it was revealed to him that he should do what? See. But what did he get to do? Hold the baby. Isn't that how, isn't it wonderful how God is? He gives us more than he promises. And Simeon held that baby. And he was all in joy. He understood who, whom he was holding. And in walked somebody else at this time to confirm this. And who was it? Anna, a prophetess. And she was... She was always doing her charitable deeds around the, the, the temple. If you read, she was over 100 years of age. And in she walks. She too must have been, the Lord must have been holding her just for that, uh, for that purpose, to, to, to lay her down in peace. And Anna too, she became led up. And she understood, you know, in the humble Jesus, whom do you see, dear friends? Do you just see his, his humble clothes, or do you see him as the king of kings? Do you see him the Lord of your hearts? Whom do you see? And whom do you see those that Jesus loves? Whom do you see those that we meet with? Do you see a future candidate for the kingdom of God, or just somebody that is a drunkard, or somebody that is... Uh, uh, miss unfortunate or somebody that uh, is is uh, is uh, having uh, difficulties what do you see do you see Jesus in every person that is what Jesus would have us do and as Simeon came in and held the baby as Anna came in and uh, united her voice what happened to Mary she was listening to all those words and what did she do with them she wrote them in her hearts and in her mind. But you know, Simeon said something that struck her, that puzzled her. And what did he say? He is here, yea, what will happen? A sword will pierce her heart through Jesus Christ. She didn't understand that. She thought he would sit on a throne, just like every other person in all of Israel. But you see, she would understand that later. And for her, that would be a wonderful comfort. As the child grew, what did Mary notice of Jesus? Was he like the other boys? Was he like her stepsons? He was not like them. 
he was different. Whenever there was an argument in the, in the house or in the neighborhood, what would Jesus do? He would begin to what? He would lift his voice and begin to sing. And as others heard Jesus singing, what would they want to do? They would join him in singing too. And whenever she asked him to do something, what would he, uh, how would he answer? Would he say, hmm, and still do it? Or, oh, yes, mother. And what kind, and when he washed the dishes, how did he wash the dishes? What do you think? Was there, uh, was there something just rushed over and brushed over, and when he made his bed, how did he do it? Can you imagine when he began making the furniture with his daddy? How beautiful the furniture was that Jesus made. How perfect, because he took his time and he did it perfectly. Everything that he did, he did it with joy in his heart. Those tables and chairs that Jesus, they must have been just, just beautiful. You see, and Mary kept all those things in her heart. She would take him and teach him. She was his, his, uh, his teacher together with the Holy Spirit, and uh, the Holy Spirit used Mary to teach him. And the joy that lit up the face of Jesus as he heard the stories of the Old Testament, of the prophets, and of David, and of all the men of the Old, the Old Testament, men and women, Jesus wondered, and he loved. That, well, that must have been one of his favorite times of the day. Can you say that Jesus had favorite times of the day? I don't know if we can even say that. But Mary kept all these things. And at the age of 12, what happened to Jesus? He was taken where? With his parents. His parents would go every single year. The Bible tells us now his parents in Luke 2.41 went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. But when Jesus was 12, what happened to him? He went along and how excited he was to go along. And as Jesus came closer, do you know that it was then at the age of 12 that he first knew of his mission, that he accepted his mission? As he saw the sacrificial system so impressively uh, demonstrated there in Jerusalem, light from God, from, from the Holy Spirit, shone through Jesus, and he understood that that lamb symbolized whom? himself, Jesus Christ. And he was so, so enraptured with the events there at the, in Jerusalem that what happened with his mom and dad, his mother and dad, as they went back to uh, Nazareth, what happened? They forgot Jesus at the temple. And he was there. One moment's, uh, one moment's of neglect, and how long did it take them to find him? Three days. And there, there is a lesson for us. Many times, one moment's neglect, and it takes us three days to, to renew the joy of the Lord in our hearts. You remember uh, one moment of neglect in Jacob's life, and how many years did it take him to, uh, to make things right with his brother? Esau. Well, he served seven, seven, and maybe six more. and six more on top of that, so 20 years. 20 years. He left at about 72 years of age, and now he's over 90 years of age, you see. But now Jesus is at the temple, and Mary leaves him, and so does Joseph, and you know what happens. Jesus is sitting with the doctors of the law, and with the learned men, and here is that 12-year-old boy answering and asking questions. I've often wondered who those men were that were there. I've wondered if Nicodemus was not there, for Nicodemus was the teacher in Israel. He was one of the highest learned men. We don't know. We will have the joy of finding many wonderful things and delights that, that God will give us, you see? In, in heaven, but uh, some were there that perhaps remembered him 18 years later. But when Mary finds him, what does he say to, uh, to Mary? Mary, uh, and he didn't, doesn't call her uh, Mary, but he says, how is it that you sought me? Did you not know, wished ye not, that I must be about my father's business? You know, 
Maybe Joseph was disturbed or perturbed, we don't know. But what is written of Mary, we know. But Mary kept all these sayings in her heart. We know that from the age of 12 and on, Jesus was with his parents. Sometime before Jesus is 27, and, uh, or 30, actually, 27 AD, Jesus, uh, as he heads down to the Jordan, what do we read of Joseph, his father? His father has passed away. And now Jesus is, the, has, is even closer to Mary. But now, who remembers how it was that Jesus was called to begin his ministry? Who remembers? How was it that he knew that this is the day that he must begin his ministry? Aha, uh -huh. he was working in the carpenter shop and news from the Baptist came up through the travelers. And somebody stepped into his shop and gave him the news of the preaching of the Baptist, which was, he was preaching about the forerunner. And that was the message to Jesus Christ. You read it in the first paragraph in the Desire of Ages, the chapter Baptism. Beautiful, beautiful. And Jesus, what does he do? He leaves his tools, never to enter upon that work again. He bids goodbye to his mother, heads down to the Jordan, and there at the Jordan, John, seeing someone he had never, someone with a countenance he had never seen before, recognized Jesus as the Messiah, as the promised one. Cousins who had never met. And there he is baptized, and at the baptism, what is heard? This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Some heard it and thought it thundered, while others heard it and what? And understood it. One of those that understood was John the Beloved the disciple of the Baptist. And John the Beloved, you know what he would do? Oh, you know what? We jumped a little bit. We forgot to speak of the wise men that I told you I would tell you. And that's, I'll make just a brief interruption. You know, the wise men came after the dedication of Jesus Christ. And when they came, where did they find Jesus? In the manger, in the stable? That's not what the Bible says. They found them where? In a? In a house. In a house. Still in Bethlehem. And it's a wonderful delight to see him in a house. I somehow think that one of those shepherds must have invited the family. We don't know. Okay, but he was in a house. It was not their house. He was in a house. And you know what history tells us? History tells us that there were not three wise men. The Bible doesn't say three to begin with. It gives the gifts, and therefore gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and that's why a lot of people think three, okay? Three gifts. But history tells us that a whole contingent of people came from the East, 600 in all. This is what history bears that about 600 people came and worshiped Jesus Christ. Now, you can't imagine the stir in Jerusalem with these people from the East. And you can imagine the joy that it brought Mary and Joseph. And of course, we find Joseph going to Egypt, etc. And now we find the, the beloved hearing those words of God this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And you know what that beloved did? You know what John, the disciple who would later lean on the breast of Jesus did? What did he do with that, with those words? We read the following. <laughs> Rumors had reached Mary concerning her son and his sufferings. Okay, this is in uh, Selected, uh, Volume 2 of Spirit of Prophecy, 99 and 100. For me, I, I, it's, it's a thrilling uh, a chapter and thrilling uh, uh, remarks here. So Mary had heard rumors concerning her son. Now, John, one of the new disciples, had searched for Christ 
and found him where? In his humiliation, emaciated, and bearing the marks of great physical and mental stress. So what happened? Christ was baptized. The voice of God was heard. The Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, and Christ was led where? Into the wilderness to be tempted of whom? Of the devil. And God would be with him. Who followed him into the wilderness? Who followed him into the wilderness? John had found him, had searched for Christ and found him in his humiliation, emaciated and bearing the marks of great physical and mental stress. Christ had been there for some days already. Jesus, unwilling that John should witness his humiliation, had gently yet firmly dismissed him from his presence. I must bear this alone with my father. He wished to be alone. No human eye could behold his agony. No human heart could be called out in sympathy with his distress. The disciple, listen to this, what did he do next, John? John was like a bee, a busy bee, going from one place to the other. He had heard news, he couldn't sit still with those news. What, was, what were the news that he had heard? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The disciple had sought Mary in her home and related to her the incidents of this meeting with Jesus as well as the events as the event of his baptism when the voice of God was heard in acknowledgement of his son so what happened even as we said John rushed to Nazareth even as he was dismissed from Jesus and told her of the events that took place at the baptism and at the wilderness, as Christ is being tempted. And where is John 42 days later, 40 or 42 days later, when Christ comes out of the wilderness? Where is John, the beloved? He is again waiting for Jesus Christ. For what happens, what do we read in John 1, uh, 37? and uh, 38 and on. And two, the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Who were those two disciples? And the name of one was Andrew, and the name of the other is not mentioned him because he is writing of whom? He's writing of himself. But we read that in Desire of Ages that the second one was whom? None other than John the Beloved. So can you see the, the events of John, the, the, the whereabouts of John? He was at the baptism. He heard that wonderful, wonderful annunciation, uh, the pronouncement upon Jesus. He followed Jesus. He found Jesus already emaciated, already, already suffering from the pangs of hunger and also the pressing of the, of the enemy. Jesus firmly told him and gently dismissed him that he needed to, to go. What did he do? He, he wanted to know more about Jesus. Where would he go? To the mother of Jesus. Not only did he tell her what was happening, he asked her many questions. What do you think Mary shared with him as they, as they spoke? And before long, where was Jesus? Wait, where was John? Waiting for Jesus. And as Jesus comes out of the wilderness, what does he do? John and, and Andrew follow Jesus. And as John and Andrew are following Jesus... Jesus turns and he looks back and he says, What seek ye? What, what can I do for you? And what do they say? Lord, where do you live? It's like, Lord, do we really want to spend time with you and get to know you? But what could come out of their mouths was, Lord, where do you live? And what did Jesus say to them? I live on such and such a street. Here's my address. Come and visit me sometime. What did Jesus say to them? Come and see, John 1, 39. And John's heart, you can imagine, was gladdened. He and Andrew came and spent the day with Jesus. 
And now, on the third day, where would Jesus be? John chapter 2. And in the third day, where would Jesus be? He would be at the wedding feast in Cana. With whom? Mary. With Mary. His mother was a relative but we would also, of the wedding party, but we would also find his disciples with him. Who were his disciples by now? How, who were the disciples? By the way, who was the first disciple called of Jesus? Andrew. I'm not hearing the right one. Peter. No, neither Andrew nor Peter nor John. John and Andrew followed Jesus. Andrew went and called whom? He called his brother, Peter, the first one ever brought to Jesus by a, okay, by, but the next day Jesus findeth whom? Philip and called him. Just a little trivia there for you, Philip. And what did Philip do? He called his friend? Nathaniel. Nathaniel. And Nathaniel was from the city of? Which city? Bethsaida. No, Nathaniel, Philip was with Bethsaida, but Nathaniel was from Cana. Cana, the place where Jesus would go now to perform the miracle. So Nathaniel would know the people there of that town of Cana. Now, okay, so here we have Jesus and his five disciples with him. And they're where? In? At the wedding feast in Cana. Okay, and now... The mother of Jesus, what had she, what had she heard from the, from the beloved? She had heard all these things from the beloved. She had just heard from the beloved the few days before of what? Of the baptism. She had just heard of the beloved of what? Of, the, of, the, uh, of him being in the wilderness. She now just saw Jesus with five disciples. And the conversation at that feast was what? Was about the Messiah and the people there at the feast, what were they doing? They were throwing glances to Jesus. And now Mary's faith, boiling within her from all the evidences that she had, she couldn't keep a lid on the jar. And you know, she said, Jesus, they have no wine. Brethren, faith is beautiful. Amen. It is the gift of God. And God gave to every man a certain measure of faith. In Genesis 3, 16, 3, 15, 16, when he put enmity between the man and uh, the uh, serpent, he gave every man a certain measure of faith. What happens to that faith is up to each one of us. Christ wants to increase our faith. How can he increase our faith? How can he increase our faith? By obeying, what we have. by obeying what we have, by spending time where? In the Word, right? You know the verses that connect with this. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the Word of God. The word of God. So brethren, if this is closed in our homes, if the Word of God is closed in our homes, what will happen to our faith? It will what? Decrease. But if the Word of God is cherished in our homes, what will happen to our faith? It will increase. As we consider the life of Christ, what will happen to our faith? It will increase. As we are too busy rushing about and there is a newspaper or a secular magazine, although they may have good things, and we choose that versus the Word of God, our faith will also decrease. But, you see, faith doesn't really plan, does it? And Mary did not even plan. It just came out of her. Just as Abraham, you remember? He took his son to be sacrificed, and what happened? He believed that God was able to what? To resurrect his son. Noah built the ark, never having seen rain, but he believed. Why? Because their cup was full, full of faith. God wants to fill your cup. He wants to fill my cup, dear brethren. And the last thing that I would like to say to, to, to each one of us here, brethren, is 
we need to be practical about this. You know the comments on Psalm 1, uh, 116, we read, it is 116, 12, and 13. It is for our own benefit to keep every gift of God fresh in our memory. Thus faith is strengthened to claim and to receive more and more. There is greater encouragement for us in the least blessings, in the smallest blessings that we may receive than the least blessing we ourselves receive from God than in all the accounts we can read of the faith and experience of others. Let us set up stones of witness and inscribe them upon the precious and inscribed upon them the precious story of what God has wrought for whom? For you? No, for us, for me. And you know what, brethren? There are honeydew lists, there are shopping lists, there are prayer lists. How about a faith list? How about a list of blessings that God has given each and every one of us. And how about if we were to go often to this list and, and remind ourselves of the blessings of God? What do you think that would do to our faith? Would it not be even as Mary did? She kept all these things in her heart and, and pondered them in her heart. This is my desire for us, for, for all of us this day. Amen. Thank you so much for your many blessings. We thank you for your wonderful gift of faith. And Lord, we are no better than the disciples. We're no better than Thomas. We ask you, Lord, to increase our faith. And help us, Lord, to be practical in the exercise of faith. May, Lord, by our faith, we lay hold upon your wonderful merits for us and be saved by your grace. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.